and welcome back to Operation Moonsucker Part 2. Well, I wonder if I get that voice even deeper in the next episode. Well, anyhow, we are going to do some kind of deviation of what you might have expected. If you remember the previous episode, I've sent uh, my mining stuff into an orbit around the moon. And if you have been a keen viewer, you might have noticed that there were no pilots or any other crew on board of that vessel. So, this being Kerbal Space Program, and Kerbal Space Program using now some kind of feature that requires probes on any other unmanned craft to stay in radio contact with Kerbin, or at least a mobile base, I need some communication. So, the purpose of this mission here is to deliver three communication satellites in an orbit between the Moon and Minmus. Why there, you might ask? Well, the reason is simple. I already have my sort of geostationary orbit satellites around Kerbin, and now I want to place the other ones further out, so that no matter on what side of the Moon my vehicles are placed, they have always line of sight to at least one communication satellite. And while I have explained all that, you have seen my plane, the SAT-STO, already reaching almost orbit. This thing is comprised of rapier engines and nuclear engines and is designed to deliver three medium-sized satellites in an orbit of around 20 million kilometers around Kerbin. I have no idea why I exaggerated 20 million kilometers like that. Anyhow, so here we are, we're enjoying the scenery, the nuclear engines are blasting away. And you might have also noticed that for some reason the sound is gone. Well, I guess I messed up during recording. So you have to make do with just my voice and the little background music. Alright, we are moving away from Kerbin and to our apps, and what we're going to do without encountering the moon, hopefully, is to get a sort of seeding orbit. Oh, look at that, we're almost burning our home planet. It looked that way, at least. The thing we're trying to achieve here is get a sort of seeding orbit where uh, when I release the satellites that each time I am at apoaps and they blast uh, their engines to reach uh, circularization, that each time the satellites are released, that they reach an orbit where they are in perfect distance to each other. So the three satellites will be in equidistance, so to speak. If you want to know more about that, I'll link a video where I explain that further in the top right corner. And there's also a link to a Matt Lowndes video who did a very excellent explanation about that. Uh, a few months or years back? I can't remember! Time flies when you're old! Alright, here's the first satellite and... Well, for some reason the staging didn't work and I had to activate the engines manually! What a drag! Alright, we've circularized our first satellite, we've made another orbit with our vehicle. Now we are in perfect position to release the second one. And there we go. Goodbye, little satellite. Come on, get out of there. All right. It's moving slowly. It's shy, I guess. But now we're blasting. Okay. So once again, the satellites are trying to be in roughly one-third of an orbit away of each other. So they have to be almost in a perfect circle of 20 million kilometers to reach that goal at that distance. 
If you go and watch the other video I mentioned earlier, you also will get a link to a calculator where you can calculate, look at that, fine orbits of satellites. Depending on how many you want to put in an orbit, it calculates what the periaps and apoaps should be in order for you to see your satellites perfectly. Be that as it may, now that we have successfully delivered our payload, it is time to get the SSTO, the set STO rather, back safely home to Kerbin. In order to do that, we are going to do a gravity assist maneuver using the Moon's Sphere of Influence. Thank you for providing your assistance, dear planetoid. All the right. Now with a small adjustment burn, I'm trying to get in at around 50 kilometers above the planet. So we're touching the upper parts of the atmosphere and will hopefully not burn up while doing that. If I did that maneuver while coming in from 20 million kilometers, then maybe it would have been a lot deadlier. Well, it probably would have been, a, well, it surely would have been a lot deadlier than doing it this way. Okay, we are now very close to our planet and to the atmosphere of Kerbin. Let's see how that's going to go. I'm angling the plane up to increase the braking effect. Um, yeah, apparently my trusted spit roast aero braking maneuver is still in full effect. I'm trying to transfer fuel to the front of the plane to make it less tail heavy, since, well, the rapiers and the nukes, they have quite a lot of weight to them. And without the payload and with that much less fuel, the center of mass has shifted back, and I'm trying to remedy that by pumping fuel to the top part, the front part of the plane. Okay, this is my second pass. I think in the end I made about four or five passes until I had an orbit that was sufficient to get really back down onto the surface. And another pass. All right. So once I had a really stable orbit, I uh, went into about 70 kilometers and watched until the Kerbal Space Center was in range and then I fired, of course, a retrograde burn and I died. Again! Yes, time to do this again. So I decided to do a not so steep re-entry this time and I also decided to angle my plane up when I was still back up further, because if you go really straight, if you point your nose prograde, then you're going to burn up a lot uh, more likely than if you don't do that and if you angle your plane a little bit. The more surface area you offer the atmosphere to grab onto, the earlier the braking effect takes place, so you're not as fast when you're on the, on the lower, more dangerous parts of the atmosphere, and so on. Oh, no! Well, what was that part about grabbing onto your plane? Well, it seems that the atmosphere has grabbed more than just on, it has taken a wing! Alright, don't think I'm going to save this. Nope, this looks bad. Boom! Again! And yes, finally I managed to not fly like a klutz and get the plane back safely onto the runway, which we're seeing here. Touchdown, well, bounce down rather, touchdown now of the set STO. So now my moon circle mission is back on track. We now can communicate with the dark side of the moon and we're going to do that in the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like and a comment and I hope I see you again in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.